This video is sponsored by Skillshare. We've been taught in school that failure is bad and should be avoided at all costs. But we've come to embrace failure. After all, what Thorwardy is, is essentially the result of more than 5 years of failed experiments. When we're about to do something that feels scary, or when self-doubt starts creeping in, we would ask ourselves, realistically, what's the worst thing that can happen? That's what we asked ourselves when we first started making videos on YouTube, when we were certain that our videos were not good enough. Worst case scenario, no one's gonna watch our videos, or maybe some people will make fun of us. But it's hardly the end of the world. And then I had doubts about putting my art and animations into our work because I was certain that they were not good enough. But Glow will drill these words into my head. Feel more often, feel faster because that's how I could learn and grow faster. I've also realized that simply putting in the work is the single most effective way in overcoming self-doubt. When I put in the work, I'll naturally get better at what I do. And when I get better, I'll have less doubt in my abilities. The truth is that when we look back at our work from a few months ago, we would cringe and ask ourselves, what were we thinking when we published this? But we take that as a good sign, because it could only mean that we've grown and that we've gotten better at our craft. And it was only possible due to our willingness to fail. Failure seems scarier than it should be, partly because we're worried about others' opinions. What would people think if we failed? Would they think less of us? Or would they laugh at us? When you put in the work and put yourself out there, you will realize that no matter how hard you try or how well you do, there will be critics. Everyone has opinions, but not all of them are gonna be great. You may find that even the opinions of the people closest to you, the people that you love and care about, may not always be ones that point you in the best direction. But being immune to others' opinions doesn't mean ignoring or dismissing their words. It means being picky with the external voices you let into your heads and extracting value from the right opinions. Not gonna lie, we are not 100% immune to what other people think. But if we were to have let the opinions of the people around us drown out our inner voices, then Thoughtworthy would have ceased to exist ages ago. When in doubt, We've learned that you've always got to stick to your principles and follow your intuition. We feel that sometimes people just get offended a little too easily. And we say that fully aware that we may have just offended a few people. But we understand with the anonymity that the internet has provided, people can be emboldened to make thoughtless, insensitive or uninformed remarks without having to face the consequences. And when you constantly come across comments like that, day in and day out, it can start chipping away at your mental armour and test your patience. Because our work lives on the internet and is publicly available for all to scrutinise, we have had the pleasure of receiving our fair share of these remarks. But thankfully, we have never taken ourselves that seriously. Whether they are unjustified criticisms or offensive insults, we have mostly been able to laugh them off. Sometimes these remarks are made by the people who just want to watch the world burn. So the last thing we want to do is to fight fire with fire. The world, whether virtual or physical, is full of wonders to be explored. But if you navigate it without keeping your sense of humour, you'll just start getting upset by the littlest thing with every step that you take.
There's always been this idea of what success should look like, certain milestones that one should hit at certain stages of their lives. For a big part of the five years that we were building Talkworthy, it was like our peers were pulling ahead, landing lucrative careers, starting families, while Talkworthy was not going anywhere at all. The people around us, with the best intentions, would also be quick to remind us that we were off the pace and that it would be a good idea to catch up soon. But at a certain point, we realized that we're not really falling behind. Everyone's just running their own race. We all have different starting points, different finishing lines. There's no reason to feel concerned that others seem to be doing better in their race than you are doing in yours. It's not a zero-sum game. Just be happy for them and congratulate them. Spend all your energy and attention on yourself instead. When you focus on yourself, naturally, you'll start doing better in your own race. And most important of all, you'll be much, much happier. Recently, we came across an interesting class on Skillshare that we thought encompassed the spirit of the four rules that we talked about today. It's an extremely short, five-minute class called Failure as a Win by Ethan Botner. Students of the class were encouraged to create and share something called a failure resume. In them are the lessons learned from their failures and stories about staying positive and overcoming self-doubt. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for the creative and curious ones out there. And this class in particular was a good demonstration of the community aspect of it. Skillshare costs less than $10 a month. Be the first 1,000 to use the link in our description and get a free trial of their premium membership. And those are the four rules that we felt had made the most impact on our happiness and personal growth in recent years. But at the end of the day, they are only our opinions. So don't be afraid to experiment and fail at your own pace. If you enjoyed the video at all, help us out by giving it a like. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and also turn on notifications for our videos. Have a great day.